Hello, my name is Brian Bolgren. I'm a level three uh, ultrasonic technician. And what I'm about to explain to you is the kind of the loadout or pack out that I would take uh, if I were to go on a job to perform AWS D11 structural welding. Uh, so first thing that I you always pack would be your flaw detector. Obviously that's self-explanatory. I can't do UT without some sort of scope. I usually take a charger with me just in case the day lasts a little bit longer. Maybe you're doing a little bit more with your brightness that you need on a darker day, just so you can keep your uh, scope charged up. So you don't have to tell the uh, customer that you have to leave to get a new battery. They, they don't tend not to like that. So. Next, obviously transducers and wedges. Can't do shear wave without transducers or wedges. Um, always bring multiple wedge angles. It's never a surprise when you show up to a job site and the thicknesses tend to vary or are different than what you were actually told. Site supervisors sometimes tend to add more connections at the end of the day as well. So having a variety of wedges allows you to inspect a multitude of thicknesses. Uh, also, don't forget your longitudinal transducer uh, for the base metal inspection uh, before you provide any uh, shear wave inspection. Cables, always bring extra cables. They tend to break pretty easily. Uh, I usually keep one or two extra ones with me uh, on my person while I'm climbing around on the structure. Couplet. With couplet, standard water-based couplet works pretty well, but just understand the environment that you're going to be in. If it's extremely cold or extremely hot, gel will either water-based gel will either freeze, also evaporates as well. In those types of conditions, vegetable glycerin or some sort of oil-based couplet works really well to replace that. Calibration standards. Obviously, before you do any inspection, you're going to do some sort of calibration. For AWS, they require the IIW block, so type 1, type 2, or the DSC block. Bring the one you need, bring the one you're comfortable with. A DSC block is easier to carry on structures if you're climbing structures or on a rope. So it's always nice to have something smaller than lugging around an IIW block with you. With all the extra stuff you're bringing, I bring a side pouch, a radio pouch, any style or design will work for you. Perfect for holding your scales, gel, extra cables, your extra transducers, your extra wedges, brushes, scrapers, marking pens bottles of water and then snacks if you're hanging off a rope all day it's always nice to have a power bar or a candy bar or something to keep the energy levels up next i also mentioned brushes and scrapers welders tend to be they're not very cleanly with their welds so weld spatter corrosion dust debris dirt it's always nice to have uh, brushes to clean that stuff off so heavy duty metal scrapers to scrape off the weld spatter uh, a wire brush just to clean up any surface corrosion i also bring a dry paint brush uh, for any light debris and then a wet paintbrush to help apply and spread out the gel. Uh, markers and scales, when you're doing any UT inspection, being able to measure out where your defects located at is always essential. Uh, so a little six inch scale is my favorite. They're easy to carry, they're light, they don't take up a lot of space. And then also some sort of marking utensil. If you find any defects, um, it's nice to mark out on the defect uh, where it's actually located. So for any repair, uh, the welder doesn't have to track you down or find uh, find out where you are or look at any sort of weird code that you marked your or listed your weld out as. I also like to write UTOK near any welds that I've um, accepted. It's easier for the welders and also the fabricators if they're going to be decking over uh, where you were at. They know that the, the UT is okay so they can finish and move on with their construction. And it also avoids confusion. So if you're multiple times or uh, you're back and forth on the job, uh, sometimes the information gets crossed. If you have UT okay, you know you performed UT on that weld and you know you can skip past it. Next, I like to bring a speed square or some sort of square. I like to mark out my leg lengths measured from the weld crown and the weld root. Just gives you a little bit of a visual representation of where your sound is actually located at in the weld in coordination of where your transducer and wedge is are located at. A lot of the new scopes do that for you, but it's I'm still somewhat old school, I guess, and that's how I was taught, so I still do it. Uh, next, any fall arrest or safety gear. Uh, with AWS D11, you're most likely gonna be on a multi-level structure. So you're either gonna be hanging off a rope or you're gonna be crawling across beams. Always bring the proper gear, uh, proper fall arrest equipment, make sure it's not expired. Uh, make sure your lanyards are all the right size any sort of safety gear that you would uh, need for that sort of job. Also contact the safety manager of the job site. They're going to let you know everything that you need uh, to have. Also sunscreen, sunglasses. If it's going to be in the sun, I tend to burn pretty easy. So I like to bring sunscreen with me and multiple times apply it throughout the day. It makes it, it makes the job easier. And basically that's, that's pretty much my whole loadout for AWS D11 ultrasonic inspection.